much deeper enterprise integration, and just, again, tons of new features everywhere. I wanted to hit for just a second on the enterprise integration. We got a lot of requests, and our enterprise customers are thrilled because we got all of that stuff in to iOS 4. Much better data protection, uh, device management. They can wirelessly uh, distribute apps around the enterprise, multiple exchange support, uh, deeper VPN support. And our enterprise customers seem really, really excited about iOS 4. Another thing we're adding on the consumer side, another thing we're adding on the consumer side is today we have uh, Google search and we have Yahoo as an option that you can select. We're adding a third option, which is Bing. And so Google uh, will stay the default, uh, but now you'll have one more choice if you'd like. And so instead of uh, just having one choice or two choices, you have three choices. You can search with Google or Yahoo or Bing. Each one takes a unique approach to how they, uh, how they search and how they format their results. So again, we're going to give you the choice. You decide, but you have one more choice now. And uh, Microsoft's done a really nice job on this. It's an HTML5 presentation. They've done a, a great job. So check it out. It's kind of cool. All righty. So iOS 4. And we're going to put a golden master candidate in, de in developers' hands today. For those of you, for those of you that have been following the releases, they've gotten really good lately. And we now have our final release candidate, our golden master candidate. It's going to be in your hands today if you're a developer, and uh, it will be out soon. Now, there's another major milestone we're about to hit with iOS this month. This month, we will sell our 100 millionth iOS device. 100 million. That's iPhones, iPod touches, and iPads. 100 million. There is definitely a market for your applications. 100 million. So no one even comes close to this. So that is iOS 4. That's number six. Number seven, iBooks. We talked about iBooks with its enhancements on the iPad. We are bringing it to the iPhone with iPhone 4. So. It's just gorgeous, as you know. And same controls, the same highlighting, the same bookmarking, the same notes as you see on the iPad. It's done really, really well. Same bookshelf to keep your books. The same PDF reading right on your iPhone. So you can get a PDF and a mail message, tap on it. It goes right to iBooks to the PDF shelf. And you can have it, store it. Click through it whenever you like. So we're really excited about this. And of course, the iBook store right on your iPhone. Now, we've got iBooks now. We'll have it on the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPod Touch. This gets interesting. What can we do with all these products together? Well, I'd like to outline just a few things. And please keep in mind that they work across all three of these products and all wirelessly. The first is, of course, you can purchase and download a book with, I, with the iBook store to any one of these products on your iPhone, on your iPad, or on your iPod. And it'll wirelessly be downloaded right to the device. You don't have to go through a computer or anything like that. Just buy your book right on the device. It's downloaded right to the device. Now, you can download the same book to all your devices at no extra charge. Okay. So buy a book on your iPad, download it to your iPhone. Buy a book on your iPhone, download it to your iPod and your iPad. Right? You only have to buy it once. And iBooks will automatically and wirelessly and for no charge sync your current place, all your bookmarks, and all your notes 
across all your devices. So you can start reading a book on your iPad, you need to run out with your iPhone in your pocket, pick up right where you left off with all your bookmarks, all your notes, right on your iPhone. Just all works. And so that is iBooks on the iPhone, and I'd love to give you a demo of that. Partly because I just want you to see how beautiful it looks on this amazing retina display. So I'm going to open one of my favorite books, Winnie the Pooh. And uh, look at that gorgeous text. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. And again, you can just flip through the book. And uh, you can uh, make a selection here. And you can say, I want to highlight that. You could select it again and say, I'd like to uh, maybe change the color of that highlight. And I could uh, make a note if I want. And so I could say, uh, you know, I love Winnie the Pooh. And I've got myself a note right now. And I could bookmark the page if I wanted to. Put away the control. Oops, go, let me go back, sorry. Put away the controls. And uh, now if I go back to the table of contents, and there's my bookmarks and my note and my highlight. So it all just kind of works. And let me go back now to the library. And uh, I'm going to switch to PDFs. And here's my PDF bookshelf with my PDFs on it. So let me open one of those. And I can uh, use the just thumb along the bottom if I want to. Uh, or I can just uh, flip pages like this by tapping them. Isn't this cool? And again, I can just you know, zoom into text, pinch and zoom any way I want to. It's just really, really nice. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? All righty. So that is iBooks. Now, iBooks, as you know, has the iBook Store on the iPhone. And the iBook Store joins the iTunes Store and the App Store as the third store on the iPhone. Now, we've gotten over 150 million accounts for these stores with credit cards ready to buy your apps. Over 150 million. We believe this is the most of any store on the web. We believe we're now number one. And these stores have had over 16 billion downloads. Again, number one on the web. So the iBook store joining the iTunes store and the App Store now on the iPhone. And that is number seven. Number eight, iAds. Why are we doing iAds? We're doing it for one simple reason, to help our developers earn money so they continue to create free and low-cost apps for users. That's why we're doing this. So this is what iAds look like. Here's an app, a Wall Street Journal app, and you'll see banners pop into the app at various places, depending on you, where you, the developer, uh, say you want them to show up. And they'll pop up. And as you know, what we're trying to do with iAds is we're trying to combine the emotion of video with the interactivity of the web. This is what advertisers have been after in the digital advertising medium. They want to get some of the emotion that they use television for today onto these digital platforms. And we think we've figured out how to do that. Now, iAds keep you in your app. The worst thing you want as a user is to tap on a banner, be hijacked out of your app to a browser, taken to some random website, and decide you're not even interested in the product or the service they're offering. And you've got to find your app again and hopefully get back to where you left off. People don't click on the ads. 
if people don't